hello viewers i hope you're okay wherever you're viewing this uh, video from for sharing uh, information and advice for anyone uh, who is considering to purchase a second hand used car you could be in the also in the process of buying the car or you are planning to buy in the future so the following uh, tips uh, will be able to help uh, you make a decision on how to check so that you don't end, end up buying a car that may force you to spend a lot of your money uh, carrying out uh, repairs on such a car if it's an automatic car, while the engine is running there's a test you can do to check the condition of the gearbox step on the brake pedal and start engaging the gears from parking to reverse to neutral to, dri to drive at every point you are changing the gear, it should be smooth. If you hear a knocking sound or a jacking sound, then it means there is a problem with the gearbox. Either it's not properly serviced or it needs some repairs. So that is one way you can be able to check the condition of the gearbox. Um, the other thing that you can uh, check uh, with the help of your mechanic or the person you have taken with is the lighting of the vehicle. Are all the lights working though that is headlights turn signals uh, parking lights and so forth ensure that both the instrument panel or the dashboard panel and the lights themselves are all working uh, because it's very important for a vehicle for the lights and every aspect uh, to function properly if you're concerned about the air conditioning of the car Again, you can turn, turn on the air conditioning and check whether it's uh, working or not. Most of these things, if you ask the seller, unless it's a broker, they will tell you with surety what is not working, what is working, if you're dealing with an honest seller. And it's always uh, very important and uh, a lot of advantage when you're dealing with the direct owner of the car. Dealing with the brokers is very tricky because brokers will try as much as possible to hide any issues with the car because for them their interest is to sell the car and make the commission so they will not want issues to be discovered about the car even if the owner has disclosed to them a broker will never disclose any issue but never trust a, a broker's word the other thing you can check and you must check is the condition of the tires because depending on how the tires have been worn out you can be able to tell that whether there is a problem with the suspension or not. If, if tires tend to be worn out on one side, either on the outer side or on the inner side, and the treads tend to, to wear on that side, then it means you need to check the suspension of that, uh, of, of that specific area of the car. If it's the front, then you need to check the suspension, uh, what could be worn out. If it is the rear side, then you need to check out what is uh, causing the tires to be worn out on one side. One particular model of a car that has that issue is the Honda CRV. The Honda CRV has a very serious issue of, it's called the uh, camber misalignment. And you'll find that most of them, uh, the tires at the back will tend to, to be on an auto, outward position and they will wear out unevenly. A car that has got a good suspension, the tires will wear out evenly. So it's very important to check on the condition of the tires. The other thing that is very important, you might be looking at a car with new tires. Something is not right with the suspension. So again, you have to be suspect about the suspension because new tires will hide any issues with suspension issues of the car. The other very important thing to check is whether the car has a problem with the cooling system. The cooling system uses water or coolant. This is how you check. Open the oil cap. Look at the back of the oil cap. If it has whitish foam, then definitely that car is mixing oil with the coolant. The other place you can check is on the radiator. Open the radiator. If the car is either using coolant or uh, pure tap water, if it is milkish, if the solution is milkish, 
then there could be a problem with the cooling system and the cooling system is leaking water into the engine itself. The other thing which is also very very important and critical is a road test. You request for a road test. If the owner agrees for the road test, then it means there's nothing much is hiding about the car. If someone tells you the car is okay, there's no need for a road test, then there's a reason to, for you to get worried. Road test will help you to determine a lot of aspects about the car. Number one, the gearbox. If it's an automatic car, you have to be able to know if the car is changing gears the way it's supposed to change. The other thing that will be able to tell when you're testing the car when it was stationary and there was a knocking sound, so when the car is still in motion, when it changes the gear to the next gear, you will be here. You'll you'll be able to hear knocking sounds. Now this was possible with the older generation of automatic gearboxes. Nowadays we have the CVT gearboxes. The CVT gearboxes are designed to run without you feeling the car is changing the gear. So that is a different ball game altogether. But still, uh, you will be able to know if there are any issues with the gear because it may delay to pick up speed or it may delay to change the gear from one gear to the next gear when it takes long then there's something wrong with the gearbox the other thing that you'll be able to know when you do a road test sorry is the steering system condition so the steering system should not have any play and there should not be any noises coming from the steering column so those noises could mean the steering column has a problem if it has a lot of play when you are steering the car then the steering column could could mean uh, there's a problem with it how about the vehicle stability how do you know if the vehicle is stable so listen to all the sounds and noises that come from the vehicle when you're driving the vehicle so for instance if the shock absorbers are worn out the vehicle may be stiff on the road especially when you hit a bump or when you, you drive on uh, rough areas of the of the road. So you'll, you, you'll get to know, based on how the vehicle is behaving, it will, it, it will be producing knocking sounds for areas where probably the shock absorbers are worn out. The other thing is uh, power. Is the car, does it have respective power? Is it responding on how you're accelerating? When you're driving on an uphill, is it maintaining the speed and being able to manage this, the, the hilly road you're driving at? So it's very important uh, to do the road test. Does the engine maintain the normal operating temp temperature? Is it overheating or is it not overheating? So the road test uh, helps you to determine all these issues and aspects of the car. So it gives you an opportunity to feel any areas that could potentially have issues that you may need to repair and may, which may be costly to you. Now, in terms of uh, probably shock absorbers, that is something that I always say it's something that you can change yourself. Uh, maybe the owner does not have the time to change the shock absorbers, but it's good to use it as a bargaining uh, point in terms of the issues you find out and what you need to go or feel needs to, uh, to be rectified. So, those are some of the things that you can check when you perform a road test, which is very important. Now, we have done the basic checks, mechanical, interior, and the body condition of the car. If you are satisfied to go to the next step, which is now uh, deciding to purchase the car, these are the things that you need to be, uh, to be careful about.